In the end, a young man who survived the Parkland mass shooting didn't make it through Harvard's admission process. Kyle Kashuf is one of the survivors of last year's shooting in Florida. Earlier this year, he was ex accepted by Harvard University. However, Harvard later took back the offer after previous racist comments were found on his social media. And of course, the case has stirred a lot of debates in the U.S. So what are the considerations behind Harvard's decision? How much should teenagers have the chance to make and to correct mistakes? Uh, what long-term impacts are likely from the case? To discuss these issues and more, I'm very happy to be joined in the studio by Wang Yan, Senior Specialist at the National Institute of Education Sciences, Professor James Ray from California State University in Sacramento, and Liu Hongchuan, Senior Partner of Broad and Bright Law Firm, by the way. He graduated from Harvard Law School. That's our topic. This is Dialogue. I'm Yang Ray. Welcome to the discussion here, James. First of all, do you agree that Harvard should take back the offer? I do not agree. I think free speech is one of the core principles of American academia and American society, and I think one's point of view and thoughts should not be penalized. In addition to that, owing to his youth, these are not criminal comments, and these were made privately, not for public consumption. I think that they should not exclude him from his earned admission to the university. Yeah, your thoughts? I'm tempted to say I agree with the Harvard decision because uh, Harvard is recruiting adults when they were aged approximately 18 years old. They should demonstrate maturity and proper moral character uh, to enter but into the But he made mistakes when he was only 16, two years ago. Uh, the, uh, well, the, the thing is, in his full accounting and detailed explana written explanation to the Harvard, I believe why the, uh, the Harvard has made such decisions because he has not demonstrated the conscience expected by university that he has realized that this is a serious mistake and he will not repeat the mistake in the future. Should he be forgiven? Hong Chuan. Yeah, I think he should be, if he sincerely apologized, and he should be forgiven but forgiven take different forms. That not necessarily means that Harvard have to admit it him uh, for, for, the, for his position. Does it mean in your understatement that you agree Harvard should rescind the offer? Yeah, I think that's a complicated issue, but if I have to give a very simple answer, I would defer Harvard's decision, so, which means that he can, Harvard can rescind his decision. James, you are now the ma minority. Uh, why do you believe that Harvard has made a mistake because Harvard has long been known for being inclusive, tolerant, and plural in uh, encouraging people to give different opinions. This time around, it seems to be an exception. Well, I think Harvard should be confident that if they want uh, a different point of view, the four years at Harvard would produce that, and he shouldn't be penalized for, again, as you said, for something that he did as a teenager that he did apologize for, that he said were immature and mistaken comments. So I think he should have the opportunity to fulfill the, the expectation of, of his admission. Yan, what do you have to support your argument? Uh, well, uh, I think uh, either in China or in the United States, many parts of the world, what we value about talent the first is their integrity. So, uh, so uh, well, it, a very brilliant person, if it's morally problematic, he could make even more serious problems. And uh, the second point is, what made Harvard the best university in the world uh, is not facilities, not its classes. I think what counts most is its people, the people who are positive and the people who have the right me uh, mentality and mindset to make this world a better place to live. And uh, I think that's why the ha uh, Harvard uh, care very uh, much about a person's maturity and moral character when they make the final decision. Kyle made it very clear publicly because he received the many interviews. He created a lot of noise since uh, being rejected the offer that uh, what we call life is a process of uh, recognizing and correcting mistakes. So I believe all of us have made mistakes mm -hmm. in our life. So. At the same time, we also want to uh, come across as a, 
a positive uh, figure, someone who is viewed as a decent guy. And in this case, however, why do we have so many controversies, Hong Tuan? Yeah, I think if, the, if he's not a survival of, of Parkland uh, mass shooting, I think this issue will be relatively simple. If somebody make this remark when he was 16 and he applied uh, Harvard Law School, Harvard University at 18, but uh, and, and Harvard admission office found out his remarks, then they can easily to take, make a decision. Because we all live and study it in the states. If somebody make a similar racist remarks, he would be if he is a politician, probably he will lose his future in politics. I mean, if he's fighting looking for a job, that's. He will, he will not get the job. Well, why he should be admitted to Harvard if they make a similar, uh, similar remarks? But the only difference, because he's a, he's a special experience in the Parkland, Parkland um, mass shooting, whether we should make a difference because of his own experience in Parkland shooting. Uh, I think that's a de decision uh, we should defer to the Harvard administration office to make. I think they will consider all the circumstances and weighted all the evidence and then make a decision. We do not have the enough information about exactly uh, how, what he's apologized and whether that is good enough. But apparently, talking is cheap. They have to, if I have to demonstrate it as sincere about his apologize, it's better to behave. For example, if he take, he take his gap year and do something for the community that his remarks hurt so badly, that probably more convincing evidence that he's really apologized rather than just a statement. It's too easy that well, we found many tearful politicians in the TV when he do something bad and was caught and he became a, apologized, but it's too cheap. It's, so only when you really uh, try to do some corrective actions that show that you are sincerely apologize for the, what you have done before. Yeah, and what do you think of the case of, of Lewinsky with the President Clinton? Uh, President Clinton was forgiven for having sex uh, with uh, an intern in the White House, uh, despite the strong campaign by Republicans to impeach him. He was forgiven e eventually. But with regard to a young man at the age of 16, Harvard uh, was defined and refused to uh, backtrack the acceptance. Why do you think we have so many double standards? The uh, President of the United States is supposed to be someone who sets a very good example of integrity uh, to shape a, a very healthy and decent outlook about life, and yet he uh, uh, made this uh, sexual scandal and uh, has surprised even those who had been the diehard supporters of his presidency. I think these two things are essentially different in nature. Uh, well, the former President Clinton, what uh, he, the, uh, his, uh, what happened to him probably has happened to many people in the United States and in many parts of the world. And many people would believe that that's tolerable. What difference is being a president of a nation, and people would care more about if that constitutes a respectful person, an honored person to be the head of a state. But then, when coming back to uh, the, this uh, Harvard case, it's uh, very much different because uh, the, uh, the the decision is made bec because uh, based on the uh, the values or the philosophies held uh, by uh, the university. And but I'm afraid that the public standards are for a good public figure should be even more demanding and tough. Uh, than just uh, uh, forgiving him uh, eventually. James, President Donald Trump has been sort of uh, forgiven by his electorate for the locker room, room, locker room conversation. I mean, that was a dirty conversation, wasn't it? Uh, so politicians, public figures who were voted into public office in the United States uh, could be forgiven. Why shouldn't Harvard forgive a young man at the age of, who made mistakes at the age of 16. Well, I, I think uh, you're correct that they should, and, and, and members of both parties have gotten in trouble on this issue of race for appearances, painting their face black in the past, other uh, participation in, in racist groups, in some cases, of politicians. 
Joe Biden just got in trouble for lauding some formerly uh, former senators for their participation in racism. And the panic, uh, Patrick Shanahan, uh, the uh, uh, makeshift uh, Secretary of Defense, uh, was ousted because of the alleged domestic violence. So that's the very tough standard for a public figure. But yet a young teenager. Uh, could not be forgiven by a university which is known for I, being inclusive and tolerant. I mean, I can't understand why. And, and outrageous that we're often in going back to high school yearbooks, high school comments to uh, cancel out somebody's participation in public life. I think it's very troublesome. We all, as you said, we all know we were very immature as children. I, you know, the language is very offensive that he used, but he has apologized. I think it doesn't define who he is as a as a person, and. Second chances is part of the American culture and many cultures. Yeah, Let me go back to the issue of uh, a Parkland shooting mm -hmm. uh, that you spoke of yeah. earlier. Mm -hmm. What surprised those who follow the development of this Harvard case was that this survivor of the Parkland mass shooting defended gun rights, mm -hmm. and this could. One of the re could be one of the reasons why Harvard authorities decided unanimously to reject his offer. Um, I know that the Second Amendment of the U.S. Constitution has caused, caused a lot of debates mm -hmm. about gun-related violence, but this guy, Kyle Kashuf, caused more controversies uh, about the gun rights. What do you think of this part that may have also contributed to uh, the rejection of Harvard? I think, I, I think we can only guess in here because we, we need to remember that in the first place he was admitted by Harvard. Uh, if we without, well, I think at that, at that time his political position, his uh, pro gun rights uh, position is well known to Harvard. It not, does not have impact on his admission in the first place. So his uh, pro Trump and pro gun rights political status does not have an obvious impact on his admission decision. But only after the Harvard became known that he made some racist remarks, then they have seri seriously questioned the char character of uh, uh, Kashuf. So then it became an issue. But whether it will play an uh, important role in his, de in his final decision for revoke of his admission, we can, I guess we can only guess because we don't have enough evidence to make a judgment. But that's, that's possible. But that's, again, it's, we don't have enough evidence to say. But I, as far as I know, that I've talked with many Harvard professors and also uh, scholars that they, in the, the general, not only the Harvard, but I think the probably uh, American intellectual as a whole is not so fun about Trump and his uh, uh, pro-gun uh, 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 pro policies. And so that's uh, the general uh, attitudes of the uh, intellectuals and professors in the, on campus uh, generally have, I would say that the majority will have a rather negative view about uh, uh, Trump's policies. So he, he's a, uh, he does not make it a secret that he's a, a supporter of, of uh, Trump policies uh, and that whether that has some impact in the college and the such a circumstances I think I can, we can only guess. Uh, we can guess. They may or may not play a factor in that. What has embarrassed uh, uh, the American electorate is that uh, Donald Trump was supported by the 3K party. Uh, this party is known for its racist policy. Uh, let's uh, look at the issue of uh, privacy. It seems uh, accounts of our social media would have to be submitted to not only the U.S. Embassy, but to school authorities, university authorities, and employers in the United States for a serious review of their private conversations. Now, the privacy of your issues on the social media is one thing, but to expose it to the general public is quite another. In the case of Harvard uh, admission, or uh, for someone to be employed by a decent company, I mean, this has surprised most of those uh, users of the Internet. James, what do you make of this embarrassing nature of the uh, social media? Event? Well, I've been, I've been very concerned for some time because, of course, as you mentioned, government, corporations have the ability to pry into this information. But, you know, in this case, these were his classmates and friends releasing private correspondence to public. It's not his own... Uh, statements that he wanted to uh, use publicly and, and then 
any, anything you're posting is going to be a permanent footprint that leaves uh, a black mark uh, you know, on your potential career. And there's really no way to, to eliminate that if we accept that universities and business employers can, can tap into that, even when it's someone sharing who's not even you know, in your own network. And so I think we all as, as, youth, as youth and adults have to be very sensitive just by setting your privacy settings is not going to be enough. You really, and it, as a teenager, it's hard to, to be cognizant of that, the repercussions. Even adults get in trouble for comments or postings or, or things that they're forwarding. And therefore, the locker room conversation of a President Donald Trump when he was a candidate when he was young, should not be used to judge his character, to, you, to, to, to judge his own personality, right? I mean, uh, what do you think of this kind of reckoning, Yan? Um, it seems we don't have any absolute free, freedom of speech, either on the traditional media platform or on the social media. There's always a limit to what we have to say or what we can say on social media. What do you think of the protection of a privacy? The United States is known for uh, its first amendment for its protection of a freedom of speech? Well, uh, first I would say we are living in a more and more digitalized world and the online uh, life has become uh, an integral part of work and the life. Uh, many activities w are uh, being undertaken or performed online. So we, we, we have to look at a person's moral character or his uh, performance, not only f in real life, but also online. The second thing is, well, uh, imagine that if it's a respectful person, it's, uh, he might not be saying such words as Kashuv has sa said on the social media. If he is, uh, really has the inner respect to the Afri African Americans in Chinese culture, we call it uh, Shendu, that means that the highest uh, mindset for a gentleman or noble person is to be blameless when he or she is alone. I think that's very hard standard to judge moral character, but uh, well, uh, either being in private setting or in public, I believe that uh, that kind of words should not be said. Hong Tuan, mm -hmm. each year Harvard recruits hundreds of students. Mm -hmm. uh, Kyle happens to be one of the Poor guys, he's been singled out in the crusade against the racist remarks. But what about the rest of those applicants who have been recruited? Uh, do you think it's necessary uh, to also review the private conversations on the social media of and by those who have been recruited by Harvard? I mean, should we practice a level playing field policy? I think that's practically impossible, basically, uh, because I, as far as I know that each year they have, uh, last year they have like 42,000 applicants for Harvard uh, College, and only uh, a little more than 2,000 students was ad admitted. So the, the admission rate, uh, rate is below 5%. Uh, and uh, uh, we need to remember that the admission office can only make that decision uh, within the limited uh, materials and resources because they can only read the, like, pers their, their grades, their personal statement, uh, their essays, and to make a judgment. And of course, their, their decision may not be always wise. They'll, of course, they always want to have the, the best and the brightest student, but for each individual case, that decision may not be flawless. So um, that they are, there's, we, we, we should also allow the administration office to make may mistakes sometimes and they may not always choose the best students or always choose the most qualified students. What do you think of the current political culture in the D.C. and throughout the United States to be politically correct? I mean, it seems the whole nation is paranoid with the idea that they got to sound politically correct. For example, in bashing China and in making decent remarks about uh, uh, racial things. Well, I think your point about a level playing field is, is very important because if, if, the char if the characteristics are honesty, morality, uh, and, and maturity, those are very subjective qualifications and they could be based on political attitudes. And I do think if this student had been anti-gun rights, critical of gun rights, he probably wouldn't have faced the same backlash, though we don't know, we don't have evidence. But I think his conservative position, participating 
in conservative activity pushing for gun rights put him on you know, thin ice. And I think there's a host of issues, uh, religious issues, uh, sexual orientation, uh, political ideology, that, that in a way should be, if, if, if he's going to be singled out, then everybody should invite. If you know somebody going to Harvard, please share their, their uh, online media profile, and then Harvard can sort through on their personality profile what meets, and I think that's the slippery slope and the dangerous ground if we move away from test scores, extracurricular activities, and the standard admissions process. Yes, the issue of a level playing field is perhaps also equally applicable in the case of a visa application, job application. All of the applicants would have to submit their uh, social media accounts uh, 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 for an equal review of what they have said in private uh, conversations. Do you think this is a highly necessary, Yan? Well, <coughs> uh, at this stage, we have a lot of uh, netizens uh, who are probably not that mature, especially the social media has been developed in re recent years. They might not know that what they have said uh, instinctively uh, or randomly might have such significant impact on their work and life, being aware that they might not do that. So I believe that uh, uh, the, uh, even, even though, as I said, the, the people's performance online has to, should be taken into account when we judge their moral character, but I think a review of their uh, uh, social media performance in such details probably would involve not only very high administrative cost that might not be necessary, but also uh, might not be valid, especially when these uh, uh, netizens are not uh, that uh, uh, well educated in online performance. Hong Chuan uh, box office was a huge success for the American movie of Green Book. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about uh, racial issues in the United States. Yeah. Now do you think uh, this Harvard case is an extension of what we call the affirmative action uh, in the United States? Now let's look at uh, say a lawsuit which concerns Harvard, which accuses the university of applying terms that are negative to Asian American applicants in its admission office. Do you think its admission is skin colored? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think I have the enough information and evidence to make a judgment on this. It's a very uh, complicated issue. Yeah, so I would... Uh, James, what's your immediate response? Absolutely. I, I, I mentioned Hong Chuan. Uh, UC Berkeley, which is a public university which no longer has affirmative action, virtually half the students at UC Berkeley are Asian American. Over 20% are Chinese American. At Harvard, when the lawsuit was brought, less than 20% of students are Asian American. The, if, if there's no attempt to, to manage the, the different groups at elite private universities, we would, we would see it reflected in public universities. But public universities in places like California, Texas have removed those standards. But again, the lawsuit is pushed by conservative groups who have another agenda. And so there's you know, a big backlash against the Asian American groups who are seen in much of the way of the gun rights activists as stooges for a conservative movement. And it becomes wrapped up in larger political issues. But demographically, based on admission standards, Harvard says the personality of Asian Americans is not multidimensional and so they are not deserving, which is a broad brush racist approach to an entire group of people. And in the past, Harvard discriminated against Jewish Americans. The gentleman in the question is Jewish American and was, was really limited to white Protestants and had you know, a history of discrimination toward blacks. So you know, Harvard has not clean hands in its history as well and sort of replicating but different demographic preferences. Yan and Hong Chuan, do you think Harvard is making a mistake as part of the evolution of this world-class university, this prestigious academy uh, for producing brilliant politicians and uh, academics? You're referring to the lawsuit? Uh, not only this lawsuit, but also the case of uh, Kyle Kashuf. Well, because it uh, doesn't have a clean past. Its track record shows Harvard keeps making mistakes about uh, racial issues uh, and also uh, about the civil liberty. So what do you think of uh, the uh, track record of Harvard? Do you think uh, 
is making mistakes now. It's an online, I mean, it's an ongoing uh, process. Well, uh, would you like to say first, <laughs> being a Harvard graduate? Yeah, I think in this particular case, uh, we have to look at the circumstances. He made his uh, this rem uh, racist remarks two years before he uh, before he applied for Harvard. W is he really changed? Because this is only his argument that he has changed over these two years because of this life-changing event. But is that true? They have to prove, prove it uh, enough evidence to prove that. Uh, before that, this is only his argument. I think the Harvard Administration Office, they have, they have this, is, this is a hard case. Uh, they have to, it's a close call. They have to wait all the evidence to decide that whether uh, Khrushchev has presented a convincing argument that he has really changed over these two years. If he, if he make the same remarks now, he would definitely uh, kick out of Harvard because this is not allowed. But Harvard it will be not be allowed by any universities. Uh, in, in, in America. So that's, that's the things that have to be decided by the admission and we should respect it, their decision. They have a, a voting process as far as I know. So if, uh, the, if the procedures is correct and w other people don't have the enough evidence to really look into these matters, I would respect it just like we respected the, the judgment made by a judge because he he heard all the evidence, he heard argument of both sides in, in, in the uh, absence of any mistakes, we don't have reason to doubt that that his decisions doesn't mean that his decision is always correct. But everybody make a mistake, and they make thousands of this kind of uh, decisions each year. Uh, it's possible that they make a mistake on this particular case. But now I think it's better defer to the administrative office to make a decision rather than we second guess whether this, this is right or a wrong decision. I mean, we don't think we have the enough information. We, do, we have the moral, moral ground to make a judgment that we, are, we have a you know, better position. To yes, make a decision. indeed, authorities of Harvard have uh, claimed the moral uh, high ground. But uh, having said this, do you think some of the mistakes, what Hong Chuan says actually implies the message that some of the mistakes could be forgiven on the side of Harvard? Uh, for example, let's look at uh, O.J. Simpson's case. Uh, the jury had more blacks than whites, I'm sorry, have, it had more African Americans than the whites. In this case, do you think he was uh, uh, acquitted largely because of the uh, black majority in the jury? In this case uh, of Harvard University's uh, uh, backtracking uh, on the offer of Kyle Kashuf, do you think uh, the committee that decided his fate uh, may have been composed more of African Americans than the skin colored scholars? Uh, I mean, the, the goal of a colorblind society is sort of out of reach in the United States and, and, and race permeates all these kind of decisions. I, I think it's not likely the admissions committee was, had very many African-American members, but I think the, the liberal, liberal orientation of the admissions committee in most universities is in favor of diversity, and I support diversity. But ex limiting it to the moment of higher education at elite universities, I think, is the wrong moment. It, at ground level, addressing racial inequality, economic inequality through public policy could be the target, but at university admissions, moving away from merit and then trying to rearrange the society is very troublesome. Thank you so much. Whether Mr. Kyle Kashuf should be given a second chance by Harvard University, the chance is very limited. But whether he's going to be rejected by all of the other universities in the United States because of his racist remarks at the age of 16, that's an open question for follow-up discussions, perhaps, on dialogue. Until then, goodbye.